In our next story, we visit another preservation project of sorts. It's in Biloxi at the old Jefferson Davis Home and Presidential Library. Moa is the last home of President Jefferson Davis, who was president of the Confederacy in 1861-65, and former senator from Mississippi, uh, Secretary of War. He lived here from 1877 till his death in 1889. I would say 90% of what you see in the house is uh, was here when Jefferson Davis lived here. I think Bobo had been through 20-something hurricanes since it's been here, but nothing like Katrina. I came down here uh, at uh, Beauvoir Road, uh, turned around a corner, stopped, and walked onto the property, and I saw the house. And I went, this is really, really bad, but I think this can be fixed. It looked like three boxes, almost like uh, uh, cereal boxes or uh, cracker boxes is what it reminded me of because it had stripped all of the outside, it stripped the porch off, the front third of the roof had collapsed, and that was looking at it from the front. And I had walked around it, and the pieces of the house, pieces of the museum, pieces of other people's property was all over, and things that the, that the tide had washed in. It looked like a nuclear weapon went off. It was what I what thought. It, it was pretty bad. When I saw the house was here, it came up in the house. I knew in my mind it could be restored. I didn't know how, didn't know where the money would come from. But as we went along and, and of course talked to FEMA and MEMA, we found out our uh, Bobo being a national historic landmark qualified us for federal funding. And thank goodness for that. You just start going through and picking things up. And if it's trash, you put it in one pile and then you search through that trash with a fine tooth comb. Everything you pick up, you search through with a fine tooth comb. Branches, bushes, boxes, uh, pieces of walls, bricks, everything. You have to go through every single piece that you pick up off of the ground, all of it, because that's where you find your artifacts at. I mean, I would come down, a lot of other people would, would look for artifacts and all sort of thing, sorts of things, but when you left, uh, you, you felt like you hadn't done anything. It was just mind boggling of the debris. The presidential library that we, we opened in 1998, the first floor was, was gone, the second floor intact. We could have restored that library, but uh, after they uh, drew the flood line for flood, flood zone, uh, it went right through the middle of that library. So it had to be demolished and build the presidential library that you see over there today. Uh, you will, as you go through, you will see items from Jefferson Davis's uh, early military career. The coat that he was wearing when he was uh, captured by uh, the Union forces in, uh, in Georgia. The press at the time said he was wearing a, a dress and women's clothes when it was just a raglan uh, overcoat. I have that's been restored and is on display. I have his funeral catafalque, which is a uh, funeral carriage uh, only pretty much only used by heads of state. Uh, that is here. Upstairs, uh, I have his daughter Winnie's uh, boat that is out on display. And in the Confederate Soldiers Gallery, I have letters from Confederate soldiers. I've got uh, a multitude of swords. I've got several rare, low production run Springfield rifles that are out. And then I have the, uh, the library, which I've got 58,000 volumes and a library. I've got a large reading room, and then I have a, uh, a, uh, an archive vault for uh, researchers, and I have a lot of people come down here to do research. So if you're seriously into history and you want to come down here and uh, learn some more, then this is definitely the place you need to come to. In our cemetery here at Beauvoir, 
There's 784 Confederate veterans, their wives, and their widows. I've started to realize that all the Confederate veterans that are buried in the cemetery, they were teenagers when they fought during the war. The history of the Confederacy, there's always something new to learn, always. It's a window back into uh, the past. It's a window back into uh, American history as well as Mississippi history. And even down the little small things, how people live their lives, the things that we take for granted today. I tell you, if you could have seen the coast in Beauvoir after the hurricane and how depressing that was and to see what it looks like today, it's just a miracle. It makes me feel real proud of everybody involved in, in the work that was done here by everybody. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time, I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads.